All right, back on the Young Turks. Uh, now, a very interesting guest for you guys, Josh Harwitz. He is executive director of the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. Uh, perfectly appropriate to talk to him, of course, after what happened in Arizona over the weekend. Uh, Josh, uh, welcome to the Young Turks. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, great to have you here. Obviously, guns uh, are what a lot of people are talking about uh, now in regards to that tragedy. First, let's start with the, the facts as to uh, what kind of gun he used, and, and do you think he should have been allowed to buy that kind of gun? Well, he, he used a Glock 19, which is a semi-automatic pistol that shoots a 9-millimeter round, 9-millimeter mm, parabellum, and it was equipped with an aftermarket 33-round magazine, so he had 33 rounds of 9-millimeter ammunition in that. Um, obviously, we think that uh, there's absolutely no use for having a 33-round uh, magazine. Um, in, in fact, it's interesting that the shooting would stop when someone tackled the guy after he tried to reload. And so the typical um, uh, magazine on that weapon, it can come with a 15, I think 17 or 33 round magazine. Um, but, you know, up, till two, uh, up until 2005, those magazines were banned. But when the assault weapons uh, ban expired, when Congress let it to expire, uh, we are all of a sudden um, the 10 round magazine ban ex uh, went away as well. So now we have someone who's clearly mentally ill. Uh, but we don't do a very good job of checking that. And then we give them this advanced weaponry. And so it's, it's no surprise. I mean, our gun laws are as insane as the shooter in this incident. So when you, in the past, until 2005, you were saying you could have only fired 10 shots and then he would have gotten tackled. As it right, is. You couldn't, you, right, you could not have bought that gun with a 33-round magazine. Right, you could only buy a gun with a 10-round magazine. Is that right? That's right, that's right. right then presumably he would have been tackled at that point. Instead, he got 23 extra shots off, and God knows how many more people he hit and killed with those extra 23 shots. Right. I mean, a guy like that shouldn't get any gun anyway, period. But well, the, the idea that we, we do such a poor job of, 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 of working, you know, of prohibiting people with mental health problems, uh, unless you're adjudicated by a judge, which this guy wasn't, but he was still clearly nuts, and then we give them advanced weaponry. So, you know, it just it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It's, it's insanity. And we shouldn't be surprised when they, these terrible incidents happen. But the interesting thing is they're preventable. I mean, a number of states have laws that, that would have prevented this type of thing, or at least minimized that. And there's no reason we shouldn't do that across the United States. So I'm going to come back to that in a second. But, you know, you talked about how he shouldn't get the gun in the first place. Look, we know that he had some psychological issues. He was uh, thrown out of his school for it, et cetera. But how would that have worked legally? Like, how would the gun... Uh, sellers have known about his psychological problems and prevented him from buying the gun? Well, the way it's done in, in the, the sort of baseline, the federal baseline, and also the way it, there's no additional requirements in Arizona, is that they only check a database for people who have been adjudicated a mental incompetent or involuntarily committed to a mental institution. So that's a pretty high standard. But for instance, in a place like New Jersey, they actually just, they will go talk to the person's parents or <clears throat> state police will go talk to the, the spouse. And um, that way you get a lot more, a lot better information. So New Jersey, for instance, has, you know, they won't issue a gun license if the guy's a known danger to the community. So you have a standard and, and, and you have a way to investigate that. But Arizona doesn't do any of that. And most states don't do a lot of that. But there are, of course, ways to do this. And, you know, it, it is interesting. I mean, this guy was ill. He didn't rise to the level of the prohibitions. I think there's two ways to address that. We should have other types of prohibitions in the law. For instance, maybe if you're voluntarily committed or you've been in psychiatric care in an institution, maybe you should be prevented from for a couple of years. But then you also need to do the check, right? You need the standard and you need the check. And, uh, and there's just not, the standard's not high enough now uh, across the United States. You know, as you're talking about New Jersey, I, I got the sense that the NRA, et cetera, that, that they're going to, you know, they would be enraged by this, which I'm not sure they are about the New Jersey laws. The fact that you would actually oh, do a check on a human being before you give them a law, like before you give them a gun, like by law, of course, we do a great number of tests, et cetera, before we give someone a driver's license. But it seems the country's gotten to the point where if they don't have a gun within three seconds of walking into a store, the, the expectation is that, that something has gone wrong. Uh, exactly. And, you know, and actually most gun, most gun sales do happen in just a few minutes now in the United States. Um, and, you know, but that doesn't give time for local law enforcement to say, hey, we know this guy. This is the guy that the college you know, complained about. And, uh, you know, and if that, if that, you know, but the problem is no, nobody 
seems to think that any inconvenience is worth it. And I think, you know, what we're hoping, I think, from this incident, though, is that the American people realize, you know, what we've been doing is insanity. Um, we can do, we all, I mean, I think after the Supreme Court decision in, in the Heller case in 2008, there's a, there's a consensus that people should have a gun in the home for, uh, for self-defense. But we, we go so far beyond that. You know, having in Arizona, you don't need a permit to carry a concealed pistol. So there's absolutely nothing wrong, uh, nothing illegal about this guy walking into that Safeway, up to that Safeway with a Glock 19 and a 33 round magazine. Well, it shouldn't be surprising that we get shoot- shootings like that. We need to make we need to really, you know, I think American people will follow, will, will really be- believe this. That after this incident, it exposes how really pathetically easy it is, too easy it is for almost anybody to get a gun in America. Well, Josh, when you say those things, the conservatives will say that you're exploiting this tragedy to make your political point. How do you answer that, George? I think I'm honoring the, the, the people's lives that were lost and, and, and fighting for, for victims of gun violence. I, I spent an off my whole professional career of 21 years working with um, members of people who have been injured. In my office, I have um, people who were in, I work with people who have been injured in the Virginia Tech shooting. I work with people who were in some other mass shootings in California. I represent the kids who were shot at the Jewish Community Center in 1999 in a court battle. I've worked with victims my entire life, and I think um, you, don't, you, don't, you don't honor their sacrifice by sitting around doing nothing. And unfortunately in America, we have a short attention span. So I'm not exploiting that. I'm saying... If you want to change something, now's the time. And we need the American people to say enough is enough. Call your congressman and demand some change. You know, look, from my point of view, it's absurd not to talk about guns when, uh, you know, in the middle of this tragedy. When when do you want me to talk about it? Uh, Do you want me to talk about it two and a half months later or two and a half years later after it's irrelevant? That doesn't make any sense. Now, if you were doing it to talk about a different issue, for example, earlier in the show, Senator Kerry was talking about how people are frustrated with filibusters and gridlock, and he thinks that partly led to this. I think that's absurd. Uh, I, I don't think I don't see the tangential. I don't see the connection, right? But guns are what this is about. He did it with guns. He couldn't have done it without. He couldn't have killed right, as many right, well, people this, without 33 bullets in that uh, in that gun. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think there's there's no question that the baseline this is a gun issue. I think there. The, and, 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 and what, what we've allowed this country to become by tearing down barriers for people who have mental illness and things like that to get guns. That's not where we want to be. I think, you know, and we can do better, and we do have, there are states that are leading by example, uh, New York, New Jersey, California. We should adopt as a nation some of these things that have made New York City the safest city in the country uh, with some of the best gun laws in the country. So, uh, you know, I think it's pretty clear that these that, that gun law, you know, the place like Massachusetts, um, and New York, New Jersey, they have the lowest rate of gun deaths. It's no accident that they have the best gun laws. So, yeah, this is about guns. So there you're telling interesting- me that uh, oh. the idea of gun advocates, that it, the more guns people have, the safer everybody is, that that doesn't play out that way across the country? Right. right. No, it's, I mean, it, it's interesting, right? So that's the line. I mean, I was just in a green room on another show, and some libertarian guy goes, oh, you're going to talk about more guns because that will make us safe. The funny thing about all that is that's just a myth that was propagated by the gun lobby, and it turns out it's not true. Um, it's been repeated enough that people believe it's true, but the em- empirical research uh, over the last couple of years has shown that it is completely false. Gun- more guns don't make us safe. That is just a falsehood. And you can see, I mean, where we, have, where we, have, where we do a good job of keeping guns out of the hands of people who are prohibited, and we do a good job of screening to make sure that they're only in the hands that really know how to handle them uh, and are competent to handle them, we have a much lower death rate. All right. And, you know, Steve King uh, apparently is, I'm sorry, not Steve King, P- uh, Peter King from New York. Peter King, very uh, different, yeah. Uh, is uh, thinking of passing uh, or pushing for this law where you wouldn't be able to bring a gun within 1,000 feet uh, of, uh, uh, of an elected official. Uh, yeah. First, do you think that makes sense? Well, I mean, you know, I have to, I've to actually really think a little bit about that. If it makes sense to them, it makes sense. But I think that we need to do something to protect the rest of us. And, you know, it's fine to put a bubble around members of Congress, but the rest of us have to walk around every day, and we don't want to think that there's some madman or someone who's mentally ill or someone who's, you know, addicted to drugs who can easily go into a shooter's warehouse and buy a 33-round magazine clip. That just doesn't make any sense. And so, you, know, you, see, I, 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 you see, Josh, that's the thing, right? So Because I have mixed feelings about it, too. Overall, am I in favor of that law? Probably. Yeah, I mean, at least it's... Rest- it's possibly prevents the next one something like this happening right but on the other hand uh, it seems like it's in that case is a Republican congressman saying 
I want the rest of you to all have guns and walk around with guns, but if you bring it anywhere near me, oh, no, 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 I got no interest in that. Well, I actually think what's really going on here is that, you know, there was a number, there's been a number of armed incidents at town hall meetings. And in fact, at uh, Representative Giffords, one of her town hall meetings last year, somebody asked a question, a gun dropped out of his pocket. And so at these health care rallies, you know, in these Tea Party events, there's a lot of, there's, there's people will typically bring firearms. And, and often bring firearms, not in every place, but, but often will. And I think what legislators are saying, we, there's, you know, guns in a political event are only for one thing, political intimidation, to show that, the, you know, as Wayne LaPierre, the head of the NRA, would say, the guys with the guns make the rules. So I think there's another purpose of this limit, which is let's not, let's not try to intimidate anybody at these, at these events with firearms. This is about debate, and it's not about guys with guns making rules. It's in the, in the United States. It's ballots, not bullets, that make the decisions. And I think, so I think there's a self-protection component, but I also think that people were disgusted, especially Congress people were disgusted the last year when they went to these events and people showed up armed to, just to make a political statement. Yeah, you know what, uh, don't get me wrong, as I said right from the beginning, I, I agree with the law, I, I hope they pass it, because it, you, all of a sudden moose hunting isn't going to break out at a political event. <laughs> Nor are right. there a lot of reported robberies at political events. So, you know... There's no reason at all to bring a gun to an event, even if you think that guns are great and that you have the right to a gun. No sense of bringing them to those events. So I well, agree with I, that. I agree. Right. I agree. And then finally, Josh, do you think that uh, there's been talk out there that has encouraged people to bring guns to political events, et cetera, with a lot of the commentators saying grab your guns, et cetera? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I, I think that there's, a, there's another component to that, and, and that is that we've created an environment where making hostile threats against uh, political opponents is accepted. And so when you have, um, you know, what I said, Wayne LaPierre says the guys with the guns make the rules. You have Sharon Eng uh, Engel in the, in, the, in, the, in the Nevada Senate race talking about, you know, we need to um, have Second Amendment remedies, and the first person we need to take out is Harry Reid. You even have, you know, thinkers like Newt Gingrich going to the NRA convention saying the Second Amendment's not about duck hunting. It's about confronting the tyrannical government. You've created a situation where people think have a license to you to take guns to political events. And of course, the weak minded won't see it that way. They'll say, oh, Second Amendment remedies. I want my own policy. Let's get rid of this politician. So, and, and, and what we need to remember about this Giffords, this terrible shooting, is that's the face of Second Amendment remedies. That's what you're talking about when you say, bring your guns to Washington. Shake your gun at the tyrant. Second Amendment remedies, you know, um, and the, the NRA's election uh, the slogan, slogan this year, trigger the vote. These are all things saying guns are part of the political process. And i got to tell you, gun owners aren't the fourth branch of government, right? So let's put those things aside. I'm not saying that they directly contribute to this exact shooting, but let's face it. We have a political assassination, and we have a, a society, a, a lot of political leaders, not completely extremist, but, but well-known political leaders saying we have these Second Amendment remedies. The face of Second Amendment remedies is, is an injured congressman. It's not pretty, and people should stop, stop talking about it. Josh Horowitz, Executive Director of the Coalition to Stop Gun Violence. Thanks for joining us on The Young Turks.